When I was a superintendent scheduling projects, and most of us on here have scheduled dozens and dozens of projects, right? So maybe some of us over 100. I have always just guessed. It's 10,000 square feet for an interior space, 15,000 square feet, 1250, 8,000, whatever. We just guess. If we do our scheduling in the tax planning format, then we can actually optimize our schedule so we're not wasting time. The difference between the left and the right is can either be time saved, like he said, or it can be added for buffer management. And what I want to show us now is that when we have a schedule where we've scheduled it with a critical path, and I'll just go ahead and move these back. When we have a critical path, the true definition of a critical path, not how the builders on this call use a critical path. I bet most people on this call, you have crew ties and you have contingency in there and you have buffers, but the true definition, if you're talking to a scheduling consultant for the owner of a critical path in a CPM, schedule is it is the string of activities that has the longest path with zero float where if any of those activities were delayed it would delay the entire project owners contractually ask us to create a losing schedule where we can't win as soon as we have a delay according to what i'm showing you here and i'll just mark those as d's as soon as we have a delay we're behind schedule so what is the only thing that we as construction teams can do we can accelerate or start doing this trade stacking. This trade stacking right here is the thing that we haven't been noticing. This is the black gorilla, right? This is the selective attention test and the thing that we're letting people do to us. As soon as trade stacking starts happening, we start hurting people. And that's the point of what we're talking about. Now, I don't want people to feel shamed or guilty or, or I just want us to be more aware that why would somebody want to change? We talk about the superintendents and love them. I'm a superintendent. A lot of people are superintendents on this call. We're great people, but people will ask, why would I change? I've always finished projects. The reason that we want to change is because we want to stop hurting people, project management teams, and the families that support them and trust us to take care of them. In a tacted system, once you've optimized that sequence and gained more time, you have buffers. And this ties into the schedule question of how do we get the overall duration? It's either a stipulated duration that we've optimized and we can create buffers within it, or it's a schedule that we've created and we've identified the end date in our proposal, but we have done a risk analysis and we have left the appropriate amount of buffers in the schedule to absorb variation and roadblocks. So that if there's a major problem, whether it's a day or a week, and I'm doing this by way of example, and I promise you this is realistic, that when we have a problem, we can move the tax sequence to the right and use a tack time as a buffer to absorb that delay and eat into the buffers that we have gained through the optimization. Now, the reason that we do this is so that we can still finish on time and not crash on the project and remain in trade flow, which is the most important type of flow. So people typically or inevitably ask us, well, if you have a delay here, why not just delay that one sequence? And again, I would say that not only down here in the bottom, are there a bunch of interdependencies where it might prevent that, but we also don't want to start doing this trade stacking unless we absolutely are stuck in that position. So when we have a delay, I'm not being fatalistic on this. Most of the time, it is better to just delay the entire sequence together as a system so that it can eat into these buffers and we can still stay on rhythm and not stack trades to hurt each other on top of each other. So my official answer, and I'm glad you asked it, how do we create the overall duration for a project? The way we do that is we either have a stipulated end date, like most owners give us, and we optimize it to gain these buffers, or we create a schedule and do a risk analysis of each phase, which tells us how many buffers we actually actually need, we add those and we target the end date after the buffers and we do not plan it with a critical path.